Mountain, Island, Lightning Bolt, Spell Kiss, Switchblade, Stab Wound, Red Mage, Blue Mage. Hey everybody, welcome into another episode of Red Mage, Blue Mage. You're what? so far away from your mic, it sounded so far away. Hey everybody, welcome no, to you're another too episode. Close. You're too close. Oh, okay, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. All right, this is all staying in. Hey everybody, welcome in. It's Red Mage, Blue Mage. It's your boy. Wolfmir, aka Kenny, aka the Blue Mage, and joining me today, as always, it's, it's Amber. It's me. It's Amber, aka a pile of shit, aka a hot dog <laughs> champion, aka double dog and corn dog. Okay, I gotta stop talking about hot dogs and corn dogs. Don't keep You're just this. hungry. It's lunchtime. It right is now. lunchtime. Uh, aka shrimp pile, <laughs> <laughs> aka taco AKA pile, noodle scampi. AKA Cheese sauce. Big old dumpling. <laughs> <laughs> You're just hungry right now. Yeah. Okay. Let, let, let's start talking about magic. Let's get off of food. All right. Okay. Great. Food tokens. That's the topic of today. It's not. That's a lie. We are, we are diving into new and unexplored territory. I mean, for the first time. For us. Because, ever. God, we're so behind. This is not that far behind. This is like last week shit. Yeah, but last week for us right now in this time period, but whenever this episode actually goes out, it's going to be luckily, 500 years from now. Luckily, at this point, we are we have depleted our reserves of recorded podcasts. This will be pretty current, I think. All right. Well, you're you're the showrunner, the director, okay. the editor, the everything, I, so you are you would know better than I would, so I take it All back. Right. I'm wrong. Again, just a pile of rotted shrimp. I've been watching a lot of Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> There's a lot just happened in what you just said. It was like denigrating yourself, but also putting me on blast and then bring it back to food somehow. I w redirecting. Coming back to it. Call time. Okay. New set. New plane. We've not been here before. You raised a finger. What happened? Because I've also just watched Thor 2 recently. The dark okay. world, world. The dark world. The dark world. I just want to say this joke out loud because it cracks me up. <laughs> it's already, a tweet you already made. It's a tweet I already made. But okay. nobody who listens to the show follows me on Twitter. JK, there's probably a handful of you. Anyway. At Rocket Orca. Thor 2, the dark world. More like Bore 2, the fart world. Am I right? Hey. Boo. I know in Thor worlds, there's like all of the nine realms end in Heim. Is Kaldheim one of the nine realms? I don't know, but it is very much a Nordic Viking inspired Norse world. I'm typing right now. The nine worlds. This is how I type, by the way. <laughs> yes. The nine worlds. Can we just, can we talk about that real quick? Because I just want to talk about that. So. Go for it. There's, As it there's Asgard, which is where Thor is from. There's Midgard, sure. which is us, essentially. Right? Middle Earth. Yeah, exactly. There's. Whoo, I'm going to kill all these words. That's fine. Uh, Moose. Must. Muspelheim. Elfheim. Oh, yeah. Vanaheim, Jotunheim, Nilfheim, Helheim, Nilf, 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 Nilfheim, Damn it. Helheim, and then Nidavilar. So Asgard, Midgard, Nid, Nid, Nidavil. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, listeners. Don't listen to me anymore. You can just stop this podcast now. Anyway, <laughs> those are the nine realms. So okay. Kaldheim is not. A, th a true Thor world. It's a magic world. No, I mean, they they did the same thing they've done in Amon Ket and Theros, where they are taking mythology from the real world and doing a fantasy spin on it, right? Ooh, you know what I just saw? What? Alternate borders. Beautiful. What? It's, it's, uh, I clicked on Halvar, God of Battle, and then you can roll over them on mythicspoiler.com. Yeah. And look at that alternate border. It's fucking beautiful. It looks super cool. There is, I think basically what they're doing is what they've done before in like Throne of Eldraine where it's an alternate art. Like most of them have alternate art with really cool borders. Cause look at, look at Halvar, God of Battle. 
Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow, it sounds like you're seeing, seeing this, this for the, for the first, first time. time because I have I have not encountered corrupted audio. We are taking this the first time fresh. <laughs> there was no corruption of Andrew's audio. All right. Okay, yes, but it is fucking cool. So I didn't realize, the first time we took this, I didn't realize, if you're on Mythic Spoiler, if you're looking at these cards, if you mouse over, you can see the alternate art. And there is some cool alternate card frames in this. That looks very much like Nordic or Celtic knots uh, that weaving in and out of lines with like a relief of like, this one has dragons in the background. Mm -hmm. and, and also the art is itself is different as well. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I really like the alternate art of Halvar, God of Battle, and the Sword of Realms because he is holding the Sword of Realms that is the art that is depicted in the alternate art of Sword of the Realms. Sword that's of true the in both. Realms. That's yes. true in both yeah. of them. Yeah. So this is a two-sided card. So just to read what the card is itself. This is two white-white for Halvar, God of Battle, legendary creature, God, a 4-4 four, four for four. Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. And at the beginning of each combat, you can move an aura or equipment attached to one of your creatures to a different creature if you want for free. And the flip side, you can play it as one in a white for the legendary Sword of the Realms artifact equipment. The creature gets plus two plus on vigilance. Whenever it dies, you return it to its owner's hand. It costs one and a white to equip, which is pretty good. Do you think this is supposed to be Thor and Thor's hammer? Uh, maybe. Although this gets into the next segment a little bit for me. But it could be. Okay. Well, we won't speculate too much right now. But okay. So no. other cards we've got. Because there's not very many right now. This is... Right? I did want to touch again. Uh, this is something that was lost in the first segment. Sword of the Realms looks a lot like the uh, Holy Moonlight Sword from Bloodborne. Oh, yeah. Do your Just little saying. sound bit that you did too. My my guiding light. Don't this. Anyway, I said that before too. Anyway. <laughs> Still don't know it. There's not very many out right now that we're seeing on no. Mythic Spoilers because I think this might have been lost in the first recording. Uh, but basically, it's December 23rd recording, and so it's only been like 11 cards. And also, you said something about, and I saw this too on Twitter, that they gave it to a metal band to release yeah, to spoil, so which is pretty funny. During, during Metal Week, they gave most of these spoilers out to metal bands to spoil, which is kind of neat. Yeah, it's all right. Whatever. I mean, if you're not into metal, then you don't care. I'm into metal, and I don't know most of these bands, so metal is just a really diverse range of music, honestly. Oh, hopefully nobody who enjoys metal is listening and is going to yell at you. Well, hopefully true, they are listening. True, true metal fan. Okay, all right. All right. Any mathcore fans out there? I don't know what that means. Yeah, of course. Wow, the way that you said that. Loser. God. Uh, anyway, <laughs> other cards. Kaya's here. There's an alternate uh, of her where it's the full border. Um, yeah. Meh. Magda, pretty cool. It's supposed to be Frigga. Who who knows? Whatever. Then there's Saurf. 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 The Realm Eater. And I'm going to read this card. Not for the third time. <laughs> because we have. You know what's funny? What? This is the third time we've recorded this bit. And this is the first time in my head I was like, Saurf. Saurf. Saurf is, is on, on fire. fire. Yep, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> So anyway, this is the th not the third time I'm reading this because of corrupted audio. This is the first time I'm reading this. So woo! Indeed. So roof, Realm Eater, one, black, green, legendary creature, <laughs> wolf. Whenever a permanent and an opponent controls is put into a graveyard, oh, I'm going to do my bit again that I did last time. There's too many lines of text. Brain tired. Weep, weep. Wah, wah. You read it. I'm going to sleep. So the quick version is that whenever an opponent loses a permanent, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. At the beginning of your turn, 
you can choose to get rid of all of those counters to exile all non-land permanents that have that cost or less. Oh, it is like a realm eater or something. It, it eats the realm. Get eated realm. And what do you like about this? What do you mean? You were like, ooh, Sarulf. Because uh, he's a pretty wolf and his name is Sarulf. Yeah. yeah. That's what I like. Sar Sarulf is good. He's very clearly Fenrir from Norse mythology. Yep. Also, he's kind of, he's a, a second reference to uh, Dark Souls stuff. He's a, a little bit like uh, Seif. Why do you expect me Seif. to know stuff? I don't understand. Anyway, that's all the cards, because everything else is pretty much land, or an artifact, or an enchantment saga. Saga there's enchantment. Not a there's not a lot of cards. We already knew it from Zendikar Rising. They released very weirdly. Don't really know why they handled it this way. Um, these flip lands, so it's lands that you can play one side or the other, and they tap for one color or the other. They released six in Zendikar Rising and four in this new set. Don't really know what the logic is there. Maybe it's down to they needed one extra rare slot or something for Zendikar Rising. They always talk about how the needs of the current set they're working on always trumps a future set. So maybe they were like, we just need one more rare card and we don't have time to play test it. Give us one of those rare lands. We don't know. But anyway, we got those in there. And then, yeah, we got some... A bunch of legends. We've got uh, Kaya the Inexorable. Yeah, I said her already. Another printing of Kaya, which I have read her once or twice, but just for the audience. She is three white black for a planeswalker with five loyalty. So five mana, five loyalty. Plus one, put a ghost form counter on up to one target non-token creature. It gains when this creature dies or is put into exile return it to its owner's hand, and create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. Which seems pretty strong if you already have some creatures out on the battlefield. Minus three, so you can activate this when you cast it. Exile target non-land permanent. Very strong. And then the ult, minus seven, not that hard to get to. You get an emblem with, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may cast a legendary spell from your hand, from your graveyard, or from among cards you own in exile without paying its mana cost. Okay. Obviously, like most planeswalkers, her bread and butter is her plus and her minus and not her ult. Yeah. But that being said, that's pretty strong. Mm. When you're evaluating new planeswalkers, one of the heuristics you can use is does it protect itself? It doesn't create blockers, but the fact that it can come out and kill a permanent mm -hmm. makes her very strong. And then if you have any kind of board presence established, her plus one is pretty good. Yeah. Now, on this podcast, we care about story. And this feels very much like Ikoria to me, where, what's her name? Green Planeswalker? Nissa? Nope. The Vivian? one that we don't, the one with Vivian was on an accordion. It's like, what's she doing here? She's well, she's obviously, we decided that she was just getting she's, animals to put in her bow because she is evil. She's a Pokemon trainer. Yeah, exactly. That's what Kaya feels like to me. It's like, what What are you doing here? Why are ghosts? you on the- Why are you on the Viking plane? Is there ghosts here? No. Maybe. And he's not in the spoiler cards, but he was in the, the uh, trailer. Maybe she's here to kill Tibble. Okay, okay, pause. Pause on that. That's good. No, no, no. I, well, I don't want to talk more about it. Why, did you let, why wouldn't you stop me from talking about Tibble? Let's, let's just talk about it. New segment. We'll come back to cards later. Whoa. What? Is there more to talk about cards? Other than the fact that uh, I just saw that we've got a changeling. Fuck that motherfucker. See, you're like, I don't know what to talk about. Oh, there's a saga, and there's a changeling, and there's all this stuff. What other stuff? A pyre of heroes? You want to talk about burning people to death? Yeah, I do, because this is the new... Um, this is the new birthing pod, an artifact that gets you some new creatures. It seems pretty powerful. Okay, let's just say this, and then we can move on, because we've been recording for... 
three an hours. Hour, and we've gotten about 20 minutes of audio. Not even that. Point. Probably more like 10. There's not that much to talk about as far as the cards go so far. But what we do want to talk about is what we think the rest of the set will have. So let's make some predictions for the future. Welcome to the future. The future of magic. <laughs> okay, we're in the future. Future. Yeah. So we've only seen, if you discount the lands, we've seen seven cards spoiled for Kyle Time. I want to know what you predict in terms of cards, in terms of story, what's going on with Cal time. You want to talk about Tybalt? Go. <laughs> he sounded so mad. Just fucking go. Are you mad? I'm not mad. I'm, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be energetic. I'm trying to be like, all right, let's go. You, you sound like you're mad at me because I want to talk about Tybalt. No, I'm not mad about Tybalt. Well, we have more than just cards to look at when uh, yes, spoilers happen. And so they dropped a trailer, uh, a sneaky peeky trailer that had a voiceover of this kind of like, I don't know, British accent. By British, I mean English specifically accent. Um, kind of cocky-ish sounding, but kind of also generic. And I was like, who's talking right now? And then you see at the very end uh, that it it's it's Tybalt. And even if you wanted even more confirmation, the um, the closed captioning actually shows Tybalt <laughs> as the name. As like the, the name voice. Speaking. Yes. Okay, that's good. So confirmed, it is yes. Tybalt. So that is one, one of my questions. You sent that link to me, and it's like, oh my god, look, it's my stupid idiot son. Yes. And I watched it. I was like, who is this supposed to be? Tybalt. So, it doesn't look like Tybalt. No, and well, it does. I mean, red skin, right? And clo uh, I don't is, remember. Whatever. Is he shaved? He could have shaved his head. I'm pretty sure it's I, confirmed Tybalt anyway. Yeah, it, it's in the closed captioning, so I'm willing to accept it's Tybalt. So he's there for some reason. You're asking, why the heck is Kai here for some reason? Well, I always feel like they put these planeswalkers into planes because... I mean, somebody has to go there to tell a story, right? Or somebody yeah. has to spark from someplace and go someplace else to st tell a story. Yeah. And so my predictions are, like, just knowing... Let's say this. My predictions are, off of the back of seeing Thor 2, the fart world, <laughs> it's going to be some Lord of the Ring-esque adventure where you have a trickster god who I think Tybalt is going to play the part of. He's probably here on Kaldheim to get some torture, some device that he'll use for torture or pain, right? He has some plan he wants to do with it, and he wants the MacGuffin that's on Kaldheim. I don't know what the MacGuffin could be other than maybe, I don't know. Everything's like a cube in a cage. So I... <laughs> <laughs> some some ball of energy in an envelope, something like that. <laughs> that is that he wants to absorb, or like it's a god trapped in a Rubik's cube, stuff like that. Like I know that there's something here that is going to help with his nefarious schemes or whatever, and he's here to get get it. And he's going to be trick tricksy and playing and th messing up with people's plans. And Kaya is like, I also am needing this box or cube because honestly. Or McMuffin or whatever. Whatever you want uh, to call it. Uh, yeah, she's there because it's got some ghosty things about it. I don't really know what Kaya's deal is, but just based off of like what her... Um, cards do what i see of her in like other sets specifically uh ravnica um she's a ghost lady that's that's all i know so there's some ghost or soul here that she wants to release or free or keep for herself like this is what i would write it's got to be something like that it's got to be tybalt's here for this MacGuffin. kai is here for the same MacGuffin. there's a world thing happening here that involves the realm people and that their interference is, is causing problems yeah i think i would have it seems to me like the gods in previous sets the gods are always indestructible in some way 
either literally indestructible mechanically or when they die they go back to your hand they all you you, you always get the gods back there they can't be killed we have only seen one god so far in halvar he is not indestructible you can just use a doom blade on him and he'll die right but his flip side is this equipment this sword which makes me think like you said lord of the rings like their souls their essence is tied to this artifact so i think again if i agree i think if i were writing this the gods are tied to their items whatever they are and maybe there's some prophecy once every thousand years the gods battle and one of them must die and you've got tybalt coming here to get their equipment to steal that thing for his own purposes whatever and kaya is here because she wants to like reap the soul of a god yes i the ghost of a god i was gonna say bringing up as you're bringing up uh halvar uh and he's not indestructible but his artifact makes creatures equipped with it and so basically they can't, they can't die it has to this will be a very artifact equipment heavy set, set. very heavy and yep. i think there will be a lot more spirit tokens spirits creatures spirit things more gods spirit realm um and I, again i don't know what tybalt's deal is because really he's been kind of just a joke they have a really good opportunity here to turn that joke into something i don't i think he's still funny i think there should definitely be i if they're smart they're setting him up for failure failure like loki you know like in avengers yes. loki so you texted that to me you said tybalt is the loki of this set which i was like you're a genius that's brilliant like he they they don't know what to do with tybalt this is such a smart thing to do with tybalt because right. loki in the marvel cinematic universe loki is simultaneously a trickster god villain like fun cool character but he's also a joke yeah like loki is a joke in the mcu mm -hmm. but and tybalt can fill exactly those same shoes and people love loki like the, yeah and absolutely for all the right reasons you should love a villain like that he's a, he's fun he's a great villain um, he's a henry v kind of character yes so so what i envision is some sort of exodia uh situation where there's like five gods that when all of their artifacts are wielded by one person kind of situation that's what i would do because that's fun to me i like the story about it too where it's like these gods have these weapons and maybe they're weapons that are like spirit in you know imbibed and that's why oh we watched madoka in order to become yeah, a god did. you have to separate your soul and put it into an object yeah and then that way you're indestructible so yeah i mean i i love that kind of story like i love lord of the rings i love the darken in league of legends which are the same thing where there are these champions in league where the character themselves are not the real character it's the weapon they wield like the god lives in there and they just have a vessel that they are attached to yeah. i love coming back to magic the cauldra artifacts from mirrodin these three artifacts a sword a shield and a helm that the cards themselves when you bring them together they create a token and all attach to it exodia style mm -hmm. and create this unstoppable force if you want to bring players in and get them to like collect these cards it's so cool it would be so cool if there was something that if you get all five of the god artifacts you get some sort of like you get the all god you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly that's what i'm saying it's like if they're going off of what people like and enjoy about these games a lot of times is the coll collections is this this like i want to see if this can happen if i can get and if i can get this to happen fast the story moments and, of like i made cauldra right exactly and i pulled it off and yeah. it's it's one of those things where if if they are going to do what they're doing based on what you've we've seen from halvar and how his artifact and he, what he is tagged as happens that'd be really freaking cool and then again of course you have your planeswalkers who are here to do planeswalker bullshit because planeswalkers are bullshit jk I so love i wanted to walkers speaking of planeswalkers and tybalt i want to come back for a second because you know magic has done this from time to time they come back to a character and recontextualize them a little bit 
the the one example I have in my head is Emrakul. Okay. The first time we saw Emrakul, it's one of the Eldrazi Titans, and she embodied distance, isolation, uh, like the chill of oblivion, that kind of thing. She was very much like, you know, classic existential dread. And then we saw her again in Shadows over Innistrad. Whatever, the Innistrad Lovecraft set. And there they recontextualize her to be more like, they're like, that's hard to make cards around. Let's make her about like twisting and fusing organic material. Mm -hmm. And and that's what she became, which is fine. I like both of them. Um, But what I was going to say is it seems like they're taking Tibble and recontextualizing him in this set, trying to make him into something more workable than just like a joke. Sure. And I, I think the direction they're going with Tibble is, as you say, Loki. But specifically in that teaser trailer, he talks about a weapon to be used for chaos. Mm. So I think they're going full on Joker mode with Tibble. He just wants to see the world burn. Yeah. I mean, I have an RPG character that I play that's like that, who's really the only motivation is just destruction is fun. I think that's what they're going to do with him. They're just going to go. He is, he is Rakdos, the cult incarnate. He's just here for the fun. Right. He's here for the lols. I mean, I forgot about the actual words and dialogue in the trailer. So now you said that he's here for a weapon that is basically for chaos. It's literally, it's it has to be this. It has to be god weapons that have god souls in them that he's going after, that MacGuffin. To wreak chaos, think, and Kaya's here to either stop or also reap something for herself as well. Kaya has been in the story pretty like selfish in her motivations. I feel yeah. So she's which I I mean, and by stop him, it's like literally like I want the same. I thing. want the same thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So one thing you brought up earlier, speaking of these god weapons, you said is Halvar supposed to be Thor? And I was like, is he supposed to be Thor? Because I think one of the very easy things you could do, they brought in Sarulf, who is very clearly Fenrir, giant wolf god Mm -hmm. thing. Do you think they've got to have a legendary hammer? Surely there has to be a legendary hammer. There's already hammers in, in Magic the Gathering. They'll make a hammer. They'll probably make a snake, big old snake can't remember his name but big snakey boy uh and they'll probably a rainbow bridge there's gonna be bifrost and then there's gonna yeah. be frost if, if they would be i don't know if they will so that's what brings me to another question when you planes walk are you going to just a oh. different planet or i don't think or so. you're going to another re- existence of reality because if there is and and see my thing is is Kaldheim actually supposed to be Asgard because it doesn't they didn't use guard like if I think if they were going to try to be they would call it called they call it called guard or hauled guard or something instead of Kaldheim so it makes me wonder if it's one of the other it's supposed to be off of one of the other like Elfheim where there's actually elves the light elves live there you know or um, you know. It's not, is it Jotunheim, which is the giants? Or is it, you know, like, which which of these yeah. nine worlds? Is it supposed to be a, a all of the nine worlds into one or whatever? Because the way that it works in the Norse mythology, at least from what I'm looking at on my screen right now, is all these nine worlds are, like, actual planets around the world tree. And then there's the snake, and then there's the owl or the eagle. I don't know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, they should put squirrels in this. They have to put on a tree. They should put squirrel. No, there's a squirrel in Norse mythology. Let me look it up. Tell me, I don't know about this. There is the. uh, His name is Ratosker. Rat. I don't know how to say his name. I'm sorry. It's a squirrel who runs up and down the world tree. (laughs) That's it. Yeah, he carries his messages (laughs) between the eagle. And the serpent. He's basically just the little postal man of the tree. 
He's like a Hermes. Kind yeah, he of character. goes up to the eagle and he goes back down to the 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 snake, and he like I don't know what they pass each other. Probably things like ah oh, shit, the elves are at it again. So my prediction regarding that, your question of will we see all of these different worlds? No, because they've done mythology stuff before in Theros, in Amonkhet. And in both those sets, they very purposefully did not do all of the mythology in the first set. Yeah. With Theros, they kind of lightly touched on the underworld stuff of Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. And then it was a big hit. So now you can come back to it later and now Theros Beyond Death is all about the underworld. Yeah, so they should probably do the same so, thing here. So I think they will. They'll leave a lot of this stuff out or just lightly touch on it. And then later, if it's a big hit, which I think it will be, then they can go, let's come back and explore these other realms in this plane. Okay, my number one prediction, squirrels. Gonna be squirrels? Number two pre prediction, tons of equipment. Yep. Number three prediction, uh, what kind of just a lot of ghosts maybe maybe You've not been... ghosts specifically but spirits forces of some sort yeah I think you're right Um, you're pretty good with these predictions there are going to be squirrel you, tokens you, you you literally predicted food tokens when we were talking about Eldrain sure. before Eldrain came out we'll see how right I am probably not very right there's got to be some forest. I, I, There's going to be a lot of, a lot of foresty things too. I just, I don't know. There's going to be at least one snake. Yeah, there's going to be a legendary snake. I think you're right about that. I mean, this is not a prediction. This is almost just like a guaranteed like shoe in thing, given the trailer and given Realm Walker, which has Changeling. So we know Changeling is coming back into this set. It's going to be a tribal set. It's going to be about dwarves and elves and humans and giants and, and whatever and squirrels. Yeah, but tribal is going to be a big thing in this set. <laughs> Probably. Most definitely. I mean, Changeling. There you Al go. Almost certainly. Because Changeling like, is there. Yeah. And, and again, watch the trailer. The trailer mentions these different tribes, so they're like very clearly saying, hey, tribal set, check it out. And we haven't had a real tribal set in a minute. His name, the squirrel's name, is considered to mean drill tooth or boar tooth. Just throwing it out there. Why didn't they put that in the squirrel secret layer? Oh, who cares? They should have. Whatever. <laughs> I'm done talking <laughs> about Thor. I had to spend two hours bored out of my mind watching Thor 2. I didn't have to spend it. That's what I chose to do. Let's. Okay, so here's how I want to end this episode. Okay. I'm going to get my phone out. Okay. I'm going to start a timer. Okay. 60 seconds. All right. And I want to hear your review of Thor 2. All right. This is your full and complete Thor 2 The Dark World review in 60 seconds by Amber. This will be the conclusion of the show. We're at Red Blue MTG. I'm at Wolfmere. She's at Rocket Orca. Ready, set, go. Thor 2 is just a knockoff Lord of the Rings where... Nothing, so much happens, yet nothing is resolved. I really was rooting for Jane to die. You shouldn't have a movie where your protagonist love interest, you want to get exploded. It was like watching Anakin and Padme all over again. If you've seen the TV sh show, what, uh, what We Do in the Shadows on Fox, basically Thor 2, the dark world is Colin, the psychic vampire personified. I laughed once when Loki dies very dramatically in the eyes of Thor, and it was like a brothers reuniting. And then he gets back, Thor gets back to Midgard and sees Dr. Eric Selvig, who in the last movie was mind controlled by Loki. And he goes, Thor, oh my goodness, where's Loki? And Thor goes, oh, he's dead. And then Eric goes, oh, thank God. <laughs> and then Thor is like sad. And I laughed so hard. <laughs> You're a bad person. Whatever. It was really good. It was clever <laughs> and a smart. The one good writing, piece of writing in this entire movie. The end. And with that, <laughs> we conclude. Goodbye. Bye.